Here lie the ashes of Dorothy Parker, humorist, writer, critic, defender of human and civil rights. For her epitaph, she suggested, excuse my dust. This memorial garden is dedicated to her noble spirit, which celebrated the oneness of humankind and to the bonds of everlasting friendship between black and Jewish people. Dedicated by the NAACP, October 20th, 1988. <laughs> She's considered by many to be one of the best and most brilliant literary wits of the 20th century. How did a Jewish woman born into wealth in the late 1800s and part of the elite of New York and old Hollywood end up leaving her estate and cremated ashes to Martin Luther King? So Dorothy Parker had a social conscience at a very young age. She wrote about black and Jewish writers and actors in the 1920s. So when the civil rights movement really got going in the 1940s and 50s, she was already in the middle of things. And so when she died, she left her estate to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man she never met. Dorothy Rothschild was born August 22, 1893, exactly 125 years ago. She was the daughter of J. Henry Rothschild, a Jewish coat maker, and a Protestant mother, Eliza Rothschild, who died when Dorothy was five years old. Her father remarried very quickly to an older lady, um, and she died when Dorothy was nine. And after she did that, not like her. She didn't like her. She did not get along with her stepmother. Um, and so after that, the family just took in a lot of dogs. So it was Dorothy, her dad, and the dogs. When they lived here, the subway was only open one year. So it was a nickel to take the train. Um, rents back then were about 8 to $10 a month. So that would probably be around like $900, $1,000 a month. Dorothy lived with her father in numerous Upper West Side apartments. She was the apple of his eye. Where are we right now? We're walking up West 79th Street. Okay, headed, Amsterdam. Yep, headed east to Dorothy Parker School. One of the things she liked to say is her parents didn't want her to cross any avenues. <laughs> Dorothy went to Blessed Sacrament Catholic School, which today is Rodef Shalom, New York's only reformed Jewish private school. Upper-class Jewish families at the time often sent their children to Catholic school. She was not a good student and was a class clown, which did not go over well with the nuns. She dropped out of school at 13. I mean, were they, was her dad influential in terms of her Judaism. Assimilation was happening. And so her father never really identified very much with being a Jew. And he wasn't allowed to join any of the mainstream men's clubs because he was a Jew. Did they have Judaism? I Do never we know if they even it. did like Rosh Hashanah or Passover or anything like this? She never mentions it. She never mentions celebrating any of the Jewish holidays ever. <laughs> You're walking in Dorothy Rothschild Parker's footsteps. Wow. This was her birthday. Her feet were on those stairs. Same kind of sneakers as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. You need walking shoes. See? So this is, we know this was the original stairway, and, and what about the floor? Um, it's original. The owner, Ira, said that uh, this is original to when the building was, was constructed at the turn of the century. And what's amazing is that um, it's still intact. It's in fantastic shape. Wow. And it's a literary landmark now. However new and beautiful this West 80th Street building, it quickly became a place of sadness. Titanic, the 46,000 ton liner that couldn't sink. Her father's brother and business partner died on the Titanic. J. Henry never recovered from his grief of losing a brother and two wives and lost the will to live. He passed away a year later. Back then, popular entertainment was much different. Okay, we had 80 Broadway theaters. That's just Broadway, there's also vaudeville theaters. There's no radio, there's no internet, there's no television. Pictures are silent, okay? So the written word is very, very important. At the same time that Dorothy got her break in the magazine world, she married Connecticut stockbroker Edwin Pond Parker and got rid of her Rothschild Jewish last name. He was drafted to World War I and came back with severe PTSD and alcoholism. During his absence, Dorothy had become a world-famous writer. They got divorced. And in 1915, she submitted a poem that was published in Vanity Fair. That's the beginning of her professional writing career. Because at that time, then she goes down to Condé Nast and asks for a job, and she gets hired by Vogue. So and Were there a lot of female writers, even for the Vogues of the world then? There were female writers. There was a number of female writers. And the editor of Vogue was a woman, uh, Edna Woman Chase, who was her boss. She was the editor for more than 50 years. So there were women in the workplace, even though they didn't have the same rights and salaries as men. 
was the height of prohibition and the jazz age in New York City. Parker, New York's most famous writers, journalists, and actors, formed the influential Algonquin Roundtable. And in 1925, they started the New Yorker magazine. The Algonquin Roundtable was a social group. They met six days a week for about seven or eight years at the hotel at a big round table. There was about 30 of them. They came in, they came out. And what they wrote became very, very well known because there's so many newspaper men at the table. They just wrote about what was said at that table. Despite her fame, Dorothy struggled with loneliness and depression and drank to excess to self-medicate. Her poems reflect her vulnerability and the timeless themes of love, passion, and heartbreak. Dorothy Parker was of the generation where everybody drank. So alcohol was very, very prevalent among writers and people in the media and show business at that time. Uh, she did try to um, try therapy, um, but... Therapists were not what they are now. Right. Is it true she tried to kill herself a few times? She attempted at least three times, but those were kind of like the cry of help kind of suicides where she would swallow a bottle of sleeping tablets and then call for room service. 